Hey you guys, this is Mr. Mellings and in this video we are going to learn how to classify oxidation reduction reactions. So what are oxidation reduction reactions and how do they work? Well it says right here that an oxidation reduction reaction or commonly referred to as a redox reaction is a reaction in which the transfer of electrons between atoms is the primary driving force behind the chemical reaction taking place. So redox reactions take place whenever electrons are transferred between the atoms in that chemical reaction. So let's take a look at a couple of examples and hopefully this clears it up. Let's take a look at a reaction where we have sodium metal reacting with chlorine gas to produce table salt or sodium chloride over here. So why does this chemical reaction take place? Why is it that when you take this soft shiny metal we call uh, sodium and react it with this this greenish gas right here, it's going to produce this white crystal structure we call table salt or sodium chloride over here. Well, here's what ends up happening. If you take a look right here, sodium metal has no charge at all. It is not positive, it is not negative, it has a neutral charge, right? And chlorine also has a neutral charge. And whenever you get sodium metal next to chlorine gas, what ends up happening is this, for reasons we'll delve into greater detail in a later video, but what ends up happening is that sodium is going to want to transfer an electron to chlorine. All right, And when it does that, what ends up happening on the product side of this chemical reaction is that sodium becomes more positive. When you lose something negative, you become more positive. And because chlorine is get, gaining something negative, it's going to become more negative over here okay so what we have here because there's a transfer of electrons that are taking place between these atoms is a redox reaction let's take a look right here at the decomposition of a water molecule here we have water and what ends up happening to this water when we pass electricity through it is it's going to break apart this water molecule into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. Now if you take a look at the charges let's see what's happening we can see right here that hydrogen has a positive charge, right? This is a hydrogen ion right here bonded to an oxygen ion or an oxide ion right here. And what ends up happening is this. What ends up happening is that this oxygen is going to want to transfer or ends up transferring an electron to this hydrogen right here. In fact, it ends up transferring two electrons, one to each of these hydrogens right here. There are two of them. And so when this happens, what ends up happening on the product side is that when this loses two electrons, it's going to become neutral over here. The oxygen is going to have no charge at all. And when this hydrogen over here gains uh, its electron over here, it too is going to become neutral over here. So we have a chemical reaction in which there's a transfer of electrons taking place, and therefore we have a redox reaction. In fact, this is called a decomposition reaction. But let's learn how to classify the uh, the, the the redox reactions next and at the end of this video you will be given your own problem set to try on your own All right, so let's go ahead and classify the redox reactions so it says right here that redox reactions can be classified as being one of five types you have synthesis there are decomposition redox reactions there are single replacement reactions, there are double replacement, and last but not least there are combustion reactions. And each one of these five redox reactions is going to look a little bit different. So let's take a look at them. Let's first start talking about synthesis reactions. If we take a look at a synthesis reaction, you're typically going to have an element plus an element producing some sort of compound made up of the two elements. So for example right here we have A this can be any sort of element reacting with B. That could be any sort of element. And what you end up having on the product side is A bonded to B in a compound over here. So synthesis reactions are pretty easy to spot. You have an element plus an element or an element reacting with another element producing a compound over here. In a decomposition reaction, decomposition, the root being decomposed, that means to break apart. Whereas synthesis means to come together. If you synthesize something, you're bringing something together. Like if you're synthesizing music, then the drums and the piano and the vocalist and the guitar player, they're all coming together to make this thing called music. Decompose means to break apart. So a decomposition reaction is going to be the exact opposite as a synthesis reaction. And these guys are pretty easy to spot as well. In a decomposition reaction, you're typically going to have a compound 
breaking down to produce the two elements that make up that compound. For example, let's suppose we have a compound consisting of element A bonded to element B, and this is going to break apart into element A plus element B no longer bonded to one another. So it's decomposed, it's broken apart. In a single replacement reaction, in a single replacement reaction, you're typically going to have a compound reacting with an element. And what ends up happening is this. This compound right here will typically consist of a positive ion bonded to a negative ion. And then right here, this element right here will have uh, no charge at all. And so what ends up happening is this. The uh, uh, Y and X are going to bond together. And typically what will end up happening is this. The Y will have a positive charge and this will be negative. And then this guy right here is going to have no charge at all. Okay, so what ends up happening is that Y is going to give an electron or donate an electron to A. And so what you'll end up having, having is A being neutral over here with no charge at all and Y being more positive over here, positive over here since it, it has uh, lost an electron. All right, so in a single replacement reaction, you're typically going to have a compound reacting with an element to produce a compound plus an element over here. In a double replacement reaction, you're typically going to have a compound plus a compound producing a compound plus a compound over here. And typically this compound will have a positive charge. This will be negative. This compound too will have a positive charge bonded to a negative. And then you're going to end up with a positively charged compound uh, containing ion here and negative here and a positive and a negative here. And so what ends up happening is this. We know that positives and negatives are attracted to one another. So A and Y are going to bond to produce AY over here. And then X and B are going to bond to produce XB over here. And when we're writing the chemical formulas for these compounds, keep in mind the positive ion always comes first, followed by the negative ion. So that's what's going on in a double replacement reaction. In a combustion reaction, pretty easy to spot. In a combustion reaction, typically you're going to have oxygen on the uh, the reactant side all by itself reacting with a hydrocarbon so anytime you have o2 all by itself on the reactant side reacting with a hydrocarbon that is to say a compound that contains only carbon and hydrogen that is going to be a combustion reaction and carbon dioxide gas and water vapor will be the products 100 percent of the time every single time so these are pretty easy to spot of course Combustion really means the reaction of O2 with anything, but in a first year chemistry course, uh, suffice to say that whenever you have a hydrocarbon reacting with oxygen, that is going to be a combustion reaction. And the two products, once again, will always be carbon dioxide and water vapor. All right, so let's take a look at a couple of examples, go through them together, and then at the end of the video, you can try some of these on your own. Okay, so all we have to do here is classify the following reactions as being either synthesis, decomposition, single replacement, double replacement, or combustion. So if we take a look at this first one right here, we have a compound reacting with an element, and it's going to produce a compound over here and an element right here. And so what ends up happening here is that Na and Cl are going to bond to produce this, and then you're going to have Br br2 all by itself over here and you notice that i've left all of these unbalanced all these chemical reactions right here are unbalanced and we don't really need to balance them for classifying purposes so if we take a look at this one what does this look like over here well this is going to be a single replacement reaction right this is going to be a single replacement reaction All right, let's take a look at this one right here. We have a compound reacting with a compound, producing a compound plus a compound. And as you see, what ends up happening is that the barium and the sulfate are going to bond together to produce barium sulfate. And the sodium and the chloride are going to bond together to produce your sodium chloride over here. So if we take a look, that's going to get, look like one of the, these right here, a double replacement reaction, right? A double replacement All right, let's take a look at this one right here. We have a compound, and this compound is breaking down into the two elements that make it up. 
So if we take a look right here, that is going to look like this, a decomposition reaction, right? So this will be decomposition. If we take a look right here, we have a hydrocarbon reacting with oxygen, producing carbon dioxide and water. And so if you take a look, that's going to be a combustion reaction, right? A combustion And in this last one, if we take a look, we have an element reacting with an element producing a compound right here. And so if we take a look, that is going to be a synthesis reaction, a synthesis. Synthesis reaction. All right, so there you go. That's how you spot the different redox reactions. And that's how we're going to classify these reactions. So what I would do at this point is pause the video. Take a few moments to try these out on your own. All right, so here is the chemical reaction. Go ahead and tell me what type it is. Is it a synthesis, a decomposition, a single replacement, a double replacement, or a combustion reaction? Go ahead and pause it. Take five minutes to try these out on your own. Test yourself, and I'm gonna give you guys the answers right about now. So how did you do? If you got them all correctly, then you're pretty good at classifying redox reactions, and you're well on your way to predicting the products of different types of redox reactions. So if you like what you see, go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right hand corner and that's gonna subscribe you to my channel and feel free to leave any comments or questions in the comments section down below. And I really hope you guys found this helpful.